It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's in New Zealand. He's brought along a fella from Microsoft New Zealand to talk about the Nokia announcements, an HTC announcement coming later this month, Windows RT. Paul's been playing with it and a whole lot more. Windows Weekly is coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 277, recorded September 6th, 2012. Hobbits! Windows Weekly is brought to you by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high-quality website or blog. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code WINDOWS9. And by audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly. And uh, this is going to be kind of a fun Windows Weekly. First of all, apologies for those of you watching live. We're running a little bit late because of uh, Jess Bezos, who decided to announce, I don't know, some sort of tablet thing uh, for Amazon. Uh, but And then now what's cool is that we've got, uh, we've got Headless Paul. No, I mean, no, he's all head. There's nothing there. It's a, he's in a black bag. He looks like he's in like a, a... I'm like a bad beer. <laughs> All head. <laughs> uh, Paul Thorat is in New Zealand. Yep. That's awesome. Uh, thank you for getting up early. I guess it's 7 in the morning or 8 in the morning there. I can't tell you that, but yeah, probably. What time is it in New York? It's B3. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. You were right, Bradley. <laughs> Yeah, performance pressure five, so I don't know. Also here from New York, Mary Jo Foley of uh, allaboutmicrosoft.com. And uh, Paul has dragged along a, a special uh, guest uh, with him from Microsoft. Kicking. Pardon me? Kicking and screaming. Yeah, really? All the way. Bradley Burroughs from Microsoft New Zealand. And it's great Good to morning. have you, yep. all of you, uh, on the show today. Cool, thank you. Were you uh, able to watch the Microsoft event? Oh, I guess you got it like uh, 12 hours ago. The Microsoft, you mean the, I mean the um, event? Amazon event. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah. yeah, we did what you did. We watched the live feed. <laughs> watched or the, the Verge. Uh, like why, why, do, why do companies, uh, I mean, Microsoft streams their stuff. I, I don't understand why a company. I don't, I don't get it. Well, you can tell they're heading there because this event looked way more professional and more Apple-like than anything yeah. Amazon's ever done. Yeah. And I, I would have to think by the time the next one rolls around, you're going to be watching it live on the front page of Amazon.com. I, I, they are clearly heading in that direction. Yeah, exactly. Very interesting. Um, do you want, uh, now we, we have your rundown. Should we tear it apart and mm -hmm. uh, start with that? Or what would you like to do? We can go any way you want, Leo. <laughs> any way you it. want it, any way you lead. Um, well, let's talk about it. This is uh, uh, Amazon announced new Kindle Fires, uh, seven and nine inch Fires, at one hundred ninety nine and two hundred ninety nine dollars respectively. They also announced a uh, kind of a non starter, in my opinion, a four ninety nine nine inch oh, yeah, kin really. Kindle Fire with three uh, G, but it's two hundred fifty megabytes a month for fifty dollars a year. It's it's not bad. I mean, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. But the other ones are so clearly. Awesome deals. Well, and that's that the question. I mean, as, as he's as he's as he's, you know, lining up. You know, it's got an OMAP processor uh, that's faster than the Tegra three. It's got uh, a lot of RAM, a really high density uh, IPS uh, screen. I think it was what was it three hundred some DPI, two sixty DPI, something like that. And uh, yeah, and all of this. And then the question, as he's talking about this, is well, that's nice, that's nice, but it all comes down to price, doesn't it? Well, yeah. it. it doesn't it doesn't um, you know i think in the past you could make the argument that the amazon kindle fire was so cheap that the fact that the hardware didn't kind of meet up to the other stuff didn't you know didn't matter because it was so cheap and i think their point this time around is to be as cheap but to have hardware that matches or exceeds the competition and so we need to see in real life if that's true or not but um to, it looks uh, to me it looks great to me the story from a microsoft point of view is it and i'll, I'll pose this and, I'll, and then you guys can fix yeah. it corrected is that um what we've seen over time and microsoft's been kind of in the middle of this and we talked about this weeks ago uh was the shift from uh uh expensive software on commodity hardware to commodity 
cheap software on expensive hardware. That was the Apple shift. Mm -hmm. But now what I think we're seeing is the ascendancy of content. That if you have a content ecosystem that can subsidize hardware, suddenly these things are cheap, subsidized well, products. everyone needs the content. And the content's where you make up the difference in revenue. Yeah. Yeah. So and, I'm Amazon's really strong in that space. Though. Exactly. So Amazon can afford to. I'm sure 199 and 299 are losses, right? Or very close to a loss. I don't know. You know, I think on the Kindle Fire, the original one, it wasn't a loss. I think they made a little bit of money on each one of those things. So I guess we'll see. I mean, it might not matter because you're right. I think they're going to make it back on the. Uh, so does this not put Microsoft in a tough position? You can see why Google has been very actively. They clearly saw this coming, and they've been pushing the play thing. This is Google Play, Google Play, Google Play. Mm. Buy stuff from us, mm. and they don't have yeah. the they don't have the content deals that Apple and uh, and uh, Amazon have. Amazon's the leader here. Apple's well, a close they're, second. Uh, I, I don't they're pretty know. Close. I, think, I think what whatever Microsoft's going to do with Xbox Live is going to be a big part of their. Now we understand that, don't we? Right. Now we understand what Microsoft's right. trying yeah. to do. So, yeah, and we, and we, know, demo, the, we demoed the, over here. When I was watching the Amazon well. announcement, I kept saying, hmm, you know, where, where Microsoft's going to compete here is Surface RT, right? The, the ARM based Surface is where they're going to comp come in competing or not yeah. competing. Can't, um, but with, without the potential making it up in uh, content sales, they cannot compete on price. Well, you know, but they don't have to uh, do that because for Microsoft, it's a much deeper play than that. You know, Microsoft is a platform maker. And uh, it, there doesn't have to be a direct correlation between the cost of that device and how much they make or lose on each device because this is a much bigger deal for Microsoft. This is their entire point of being. You know, Windows is the center of everything Microsoft that, But that's the challenge is yeah. that we move to an, yeah. an era where platform doesn't matter. Amazon doesn't even well, mention that this is running on Android. They don't care. They don't want you to no, know. No, right. Well, but, but see, they actually do have a platform, and that platform is called Amazon. Amazon, yeah. You know, or, or you yeah, could think yeah. of it as Kindle. You know, they really do have a platform. I mean, they, the devices happen to run on That's a good Android. point. I mean, that almost a store matter. is a platform, isn't it? You're buying it. See, when you buy an Apple device, you're buying into the Apple ecosystem. We know that that's right. iTunes and the App Store, but right. whatever. It's the Apple ecosystem. You know, when you buy an Amazon device, you're buying into the Amazon ecosystem. Those are two very safe ecosystems. Um, when you buy into Google, you know, you're buying into the Google ecosystem, really. It's not really Android. It's, you know, yeah, right. Android plus Play plus, you know. It's other, become you know, that, so, though, in the last year. This yeah. is all new. This is a big shift. Oh, absolutely. Now, yeah. now here's, the, here's the other uh, point, and, and, and Amazon did not address this. In the past, the fire has been U.S. only. Uh, and right. they, I was ho yeah. I was hoping they were going to say international. You can't get it in New Zealand. You can't get the content in, uh, in New well, Zealand. Well, I'm happy to announce no. my free service where I will ship Amazon Kindle Fires <laughs> anywhere in the world. <laughs> it doesn't matter because <laughs> that ecosystem doesn't go with yeah. it. And that's the real problem. And yeah. it fortunately means there's still an opportunity for other players who can be global players. Right? You know, so, the other yeah. player we know nothing about still is Nuco, Right. Microsoft and Barnes Nuco. and Noble. Oh, they're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was, was going to say, who? Who? who knew, knew who? Nuco, <laughs> yeah, I remember when they did the announcement with Barnes and Noble, they created that, right. uh, that company. Yeah, but that gives them, that's Microsoft's ebook component of their ecosystem, really, right? Probably. I mean, that's we how don't I, really that. I would guess, know you know. Yet, and obviously, yeah. these things, they, they, there's an intermingling that occurs. I mean, you can buy an iPad and still access Kindle books, you know? You could buy a Google Nexus 7 tablet and still get Kindle or whatever, um, and obviously in Windows as well. So there's some interplay between the platforms. But uh, I think there's a much bigger market for people who want a pure Android, I'm sorry, a pure Amazon experience than who want a pure Google experience right now. Yeah, and, and Amazon is creating a brand around everything they're doing here. It's all about yeah. having a separate distancing brand. You know, people don't want to get caught up with the Google brand sometimes. They want to sit with the Amazon brand, which is a big, big differentiator for them. Yep. It's an inter It's a really interesting. Um, it's fun because I, you know, the Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. Oh, yeah. From the per from the point of view of a um, consumer, uh, I know everything just got very interesting and maybe complicated. Maybe not good. Maybe complicated. I don't know. I, I actually, honestly, the big loss here, I think, is going to be for Apple because Apple will always be Apple. They always have that cachet. But you know, in the past, you could make this argument that well, I'm going to pay a lot more for the Apple product, but I'm going to get a lot more in return. You know, it's a quality thing. And I think App, uh, Amazon right here is closing that gap. And we'll see, again, we have to see the devices and see in, in real life whether that's true. But they're closing the gap. And I think for most normal consumers, the price is the big differentiator. And they're already just, they're undercutting Apple so dramatically that they're just going to seize market share. There's no way around it. I agree. It. 
You know? I mean, yeah. for me personally, I would get the new Amazon device tomorrow if I could. I mean, it's an absolutely, it looks gorgeous device, you know. Why would you waste, in New Zealand, it costs us $1,400 to get an iPad. Why would why would it make does? It Amazon? Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculously expensive. But again, Amazon yeah. doesn't seem to have the, the content deals uh, outside the U.S., not even in Canada. So uh, that's that means that there is a big opportunity. You know, the race is yeah. not won, but no, no. but I think the I think the race track now is visible, and the ho- <laughs> and the horses are visible. Well, they're, we're going to beat this one to death. <laughs> <laughs> My horse is still feeding, Leo. Can you hold on? <laughs> I, I just I think that, but I think that what we've seen is a very yeah. dramatic shift from hardware, software yep. to content. It is now all and software's content in a, in a way, but but this deprecate. I mean, I guess Angry Birds is content. It's, you know, no, no, it's part. It's part of it. This it's is part, part of it. it, but it's only a part of it. Right, that's right. You're right. Yeah, I'd say that's content right. and services together. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think you have to factor in things like iCloud, SkyDrive, Xbox Live, like not just yep. titles of games and, and apps, but also the actual services too. Yep. Well, the and services it, have to work, but they're tra- they have to be transparent because consumers don't want to know yeah. about the cloud. So they think know, it rains in the cloud. They don't understand. These, <laughs> yeah, these, 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 devices, it does. These, these devices all have that connectivity. If you buy Microsoft Service, you get SkyDrive built in. Yeah, it's automatic Amazon, now. Okay, built yeah. in. It's got to be um, automatic. It's yeah, and it, it really comes down to who do you trust or who do you like the most. I mean, that's um, kind of the model. I don't yeah. even think it comes down to that. I think it comes down to who has the movie that you want tonight. Yeah, yeah, sure. And if you look at stuff like Xbox Live, I mean, like Mary Jo said, where it integrates in with all the Amazon Prime stuff, you can search, you can bring it up. It shows you what movies you want to bring through. I mean, that type of systems is they're, they're going to roll in the next couple of years. I mean, that's what everyone wants now. They want one platform that they can go out and view everything on. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Actually, not since I've been promoting Microsoft products all week. Um, <laughs> the uh, you know, it's true. But on the Xbox, you can do a search for a movie or a TV show or an actor, and it will come up with a list of all the services that are available through the Xbox which includes not just Microsoft services, but all the third-party services. And so if that movie happens to be on Netflix, you can watch it for free through the streaming service if you have Netflix. You know, or if they don't, you can rent it through one of the uh, you know, Epics or um, you know, Vudu or Amazon service or whatever it is. I, mean, I guess it's no, the- it's no accident that if you go to Amazon's front page and you look on the left, the, the list of products are MP3 and Cloud Player, Amazon Cloud Drive, Kindle. I mean, yeah. the, the <laughs> cloud is forefront. Content is forefront. Unlimited instant videos, App Store, App Store digital, digital games, games are in the cloud. Audible. Audible. You've got to go down f- seven yeah. positions to get to stuff. books. Yeah. <laughs> There's some stuff yeah. here, but it's not on top. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? It's amazing. It's all consumption-based stuff at the moment, isn't it? That's what everyone's trying to push out to the market. Well, and that's what's interesting about these tablets from Amazon. They are in no respect content creation devices. In fact, no. they didn't show email. They didn't well, show the way, a browser. So at the end of the presentation when they were talking about uh, what, what do we do for a $500 tablet? Like what, what puts the $500 tablet over the top? The thing that I blurted out was a keyboard. <laughs> no, like, Jeff is not going here. there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. But that's, but, that, but that's what Amazon is really when you think about it. And the reason I'm wrong on that is because they, they are a content company. store. They sell yeah. crap. Right. They don't want you making your own content, Leo. No. You have to buy content. That's right. Um, Unless you want to self-publish us. Right. Yeah, they did push that, over. didn't they? They did push their, yeah, they did. their publishing platform. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? The other part they pushed that I thought was interesting um, was that whole syncing up reading and 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 uh, voice at the same time. Yeah. They called it immersion reading. It made me think <laughs> about, you know, what Microsoft's doing in active reading. It's like everybody's trying to improve on the future of reading. Well, that was one where I, I was standing up and cheering, and only because I'm an Audible customer. And yeah. uh, the yeah. big well, thing I was, was I was telling these guys, you know, for my son, he can listen to an it's audiobook perfect. and read along at the same time. Yeah. Isn't that huge, great? You know. Yeah, it's, and I, you know, my wife, who does not care about technology, will hear about this feature and order this device without even knowing what it is, because right. that is so huge for us. What is this? What now? Let me ask. What pressure this puts on Surface now? What? How does Microsoft respond to this? It's, it's a, a different ton device, of isn't it? On them. Is it? Yeah, I don't. I, I don't see these yeah. as directly uh, competing. I think competing with Surface RT. Which is going to be more of the consumption surface than even yeah. though it's going to have a keyboard. Um, yeah. I think still, if you if you go, which one's the consumer? Which one's consumption? Which one's creation? It kind of still yeah. does break down to that rate. So um, I think uh, the first one out of the gate, which is supposed to be out October twenty sixth, is a Surface RT, the one based on right. ARM. 
and I think it puts a lot of pressure on price yeah. for Microsoft yeah. and also to show, hey, we have all the same kind of consumer stuff that Amazon just just showed. And too. There's a, yeah, there's a reason they, they waited on the price announcement. Do you yeah. think they're scrambling in Redmond right now saying, okay? Well, no, I, I, it's not so much scrambling as it is probably plugging numbers into spreadsheets and saying, look, we knew this was coming. We knew it was going to be roughly this. It's not like this is like a shocker. Oh, my God, Amazon just released some really cheap tablet product. Who knew this was coming? No, and, in fact, this is the know, price it, I thought it would be, yeah. I did, too. I did $300 was what I said for that thing. So um, they came in right, on, on tar right in on target. And so I think for Microsoft, this isn't so much scrambling as it is, okay, now we know it's exactly what we thought it was. And, you know, they'll, they'll price accordingly. Of course, right now they're going to wait for the iPad uh, before yeah. they do it. I mean, this puts more pressure on Apple, doesn't it? I mean, if anyone next week, whatever Apple's announced, that's going to be what everyone's going to benchmark it against. So yeah. to me, it's more pressure on Apple for next week. Yeah, uh, and maybe not next week because I think the mini is going to be delayed till October. That, that that announcement, everybody seems to agree, is not going to be next week. Oh, okay, so they're going to do a, which may be good for Apple. They're going to do a phone and they can sit and watch. Um, mm -hmm. But I think you're right. I think if they're doing a seven inch or seven point eight five inch iPad, as everybody's been talking about, that that is a head to head comparison with this new Kindle Fire. That oh, two hundred bucks. Yeah. That's, yeah, <laughs> they're that's going to the have to hit part. that price. Yeah, it's, I, mean, it's interesting. There's no, I was going to say, there's no um, seven or eight inch Windows 8 or Windows RT tablet that we know of still. Yeah. Should there be now, you think? Well, I think the I always Nokia's thought there should be. Job. Why not? Yeah, I did too. Me too. Seven inches, by the way, is the minimum for the spec, if I'm not mistaken, for an oh, RT tablet. Like, I think seven inches is the smallest screen. So you, you could make a seven inch. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Maybe that's I what bet, Nokia was. Maybe tablet. Nokia was waiting. Maybe Nokia was sitting on ah. that, thinking, "Well, yeah, maybe. Let's see what happens because we think we know what. You know, this is none of this was unknown by. I mean, there's no huge surprise I know, here. I know, mm. right? Or it's Barnes and Barnes and Noble makes it right. Barnes and Noble Nook yeah. running Nuco Windows RT. It's a Nuco right, product. No Nook RT. Right. Nook RT. Yeah. Nook or the Wook, as I like to call it. <laughs> the Wookie, the Wook, something nice. like that. Nice. Mm. Yeah, it growls at you when you start it on. <laughs> it does. <laughs> that would be funny. All right, we're going to uh, – so anyway, that was, our, that was our instant analysis. You guys are better than any CNN <laughs> pundit roundtable. Instant, like that, instant analysis of the uh, Amazon announcement. We it's now get crap. <laughs> it's crap. It's all crap. <laughs> We're gonna get. We're gonna get uh, back to uh, our uh, panel. Gonna. We, this is fun. It looks a little bit like uh, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody Queen. It does. Yeah. It does. Very good. <laughs> Everybody's turned on the lights. <laughs> anyway, the wind blows. But we will. Uh, we will get back with Paul, Mary, Joe, and uh, our special guest. It's fun. To, it's fun to have uh, Bradley from uh, Bradley Burroughs from uh, Microsoft. On, uh, we'll talk about what Paul's doing in New Zealand. We will talk about the Nokia World uh, announcement because that's very relevant. Um, I think some really interesting phones, uh, Windows 8 phones from uh, Nokia. Uh, and ironically, HTC. And this is an yeah. interesting thing. They decided they elected to wait. Everybody said, well, it would be Apple, except for HTC who said, we're yeah, going we to wait. wait. <laughs> and so we'll see if that, <laughs> what that strategy is. Uh, uh, makes sense. And more, lots more to come in just a bit uh, as we talk to New Zealand and, and New York. Uh, <laughs> and, and New York. And New, York. And New, York. Yeah, New yeah. Zealand and New York. Uh, but right now I want to talk a little bit about our friends at Squarespace.com. Everything you need to make an exceptional website. The new Squarespace is here. Squarespace 6, we've been calling it. Uh, but I got to tell you, this thing is a mind-boggling reinvention of Squarespace. All new code, 50-plus new features. Uh, and what I love about it is simplified pricing, more affordable than ever before, and is always very easy to try before you buy. All you have to do is click that yellow Get Started button on Squarespace.com. And you have two weeks to access the full site and all the features of the site to get to know it and to import your existing content into it, which is very nice because then you get a chance to, you know, see how a site would look with at no cost, no obligation, no credit card even. Oh, just set up the uh, trial and uh, see what you can do. Uh, you know, there's some beautiful features. For instance, this uh, automatic responsive design. This is very modern. So that when you put an image into your Squarespace site, it automatically 
make seven versions, one for every possible size device, from a Windows phone to a 27-inch Dell. And they all look great. Notice these are all Apple devices they show in their movie, but we'll, we'll, we'll change it for this show. Uh, it really is the modern way to do websites. There's not a mobile and a desktop version. There's one version that looks great everywhere. Very easy to customize these templates. They've got dozens of, de of, of beautiful designer templates that you can then completely customize. Um, you can drop in plugins that connect it to all of your you know, uh, social media, your, your Twitter, your Facebook, your Foursquare, your Twitter. I mentioned Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Maps integration. And, of course, it is HTML5. It is CSS3, the latest JavaScript foundations. You don't have to know that. If you do know it, though, their color-coded um, uh, editor makes it very easy to play with. I think you're going to love the new Squarespace. So I want you to visit squarespace.com. Click the Try It Free button. And then if you decide you like it, if you decide you want to buy, uh, I really want you to check out uh, the pricing, because they've really uh, changed this. They've simplified it. They've made it much more affordable. Click the pricing tab, and you'll see, really, it's basically two plans. There's the standard and the unlimited plan. When you buy yearly, the standard plan is $8 a month. When you buy yearly, the unlimited plan is $16 a month, and this is a great deal. Unlimited pages, galleries, blogs, bandwidth is unlimited. Storage is unlimited. Contributors are unlimited. And... When you buy that annual plan, either 8 or $16, you get the custom domain. They'll hook you up for free and wire it to your site. So you can migrate squarespacesite.com or whatever it is. Uh, it's all there. Great for nonprofits, one-off events. You've got a race coming up, a wedding. Uh, you've you got a new baby. Make a Squarespace for them. And, uh, and they'll have it forever. I mean, I, I just love this idea. Squarespace.com. If you decide to buy, can I just ask you use our offer code Windows9. Nine for September, the ninth month. W I N D O W S nine, and you'll get ten percent off your first purchase. That's why the yearly deal is is the best savings. Squarespace nine when you buy, but no code needed to try. Just go to squarespace.com and click the, the get started button for a free fourteen day trial with twenty four seven support and those great webinars too at uh, workshops.squarespace.com. Give it a try today, Paul Therot, Mary Jo Foley. And uh, our special guest from New Zealand, uh, we're glad to have Bradley Burroughs of Microsoft New Zealand uh, on the horn, even though it's very early in the morning. Where, where are you guys? Wellington? Auckland? Wait, you're over that side? No, you're, you're over that way. There you go. We're pointing. <laughs> we're trying to put yeah. you. I yeah. just did the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. This ready? Yeah. yeah. You little. <laughs> uh, we're in Auckland. It's like the Three Stooges in Auckland, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, we're done. Amazon Kindle, I'm still refreshing, still not available. So let's talk about something else. Please, please alert me the second it comes on because. <laughs> I will. Paul, you got it. I will. I, you'll hear me uh, go, okay, we're going to take a 10 minute break while we all buy Kindles. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you that uh, the press releases for these devices are now available and they have hyperlinks to the pages where they will be live, but they Ooh. are still not live. Yeah. Wow. That's frustrating. Um, what are you doing down there, Paulie? Are you on vacation? <laughs> yeah, I've been asking a week that question. No, um, we're doing uh, Microsoft uh, Tech Ed New Zealand. So Paul came down to speak to all the tech enthusiasts um, around New Zealand about what's going on with Microsoft technologies. Oh, that's neat. Tech Ed yeah. is uh, is a Microsoft event that we you know, we talk about all the time. But I didn't realize. So do they have different tech eds in every country or every region? No. No, they're not all, even in every country. There's um, Tech Ed New Zealand and Australia for the Asia Pacific region. Mm -hmm. Those are the two that really where we run them. Um, and obviously, you've got the big ones, North America and, and Europe as well. Um, after that, I get lost. I'm not too sure what other ones there are. So, so here's interesting an interesting thing. Paul, you got to play with a Surface. Not a Surface. Oh. A Windows RT tablet. Oh, what's, whose tablet was it? A generic one or? Well, it was a Qualcomm. I'll see if I get it right this time. It was a Qualcomm Liquid Reference Design Leo. Oh, um, and what model number was that, Paul? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> Bradley That's, loves to torture you. He wanted, yeah. Well, some, not Bradley, but someone else at Microsoft wanted me to read off the model number, and it was some ginormous, you know, thing. I said, I'm not memorizing that, and he said, That's okay. It'll be up on the screen, you know. And so I was doing the 
uh, opening bit about it, and I looked up at the screen, and all it didn't say anything about the Qualcomm. I was like, I looked at the guy, like uh, he's out in the audience. It was like, oh, screw you. Will you this know, be like, available for? <laughs> I'm not saying this. Will this be available for sale or? Not the not the device I use, but it was a chance to get hands on with Windows RT and actually go look at it and use it a lot. I mean, I spent a bunch of time with it over two days, uh, and I guess the shocker here is just that. Um, it's Windows 8. I mean, I don't know what to say. It works exactly like Windows 8. I mean, it is literally Windows 8. It, it says Windows RT in the system properties. It doesn't have uh, Windows Experience Index or anything. But Interesting. as far as using it, it looks and works exactly. It's just Windows 8. It yeah. struck me that this was a, a concerted strategy on Microsoft's part because when you see the Windows 8 phones, which they're calling, right, Windows 8 phones, not Windows Phone 8. No, actually yeah. they're not. So that's, it, it is, in fact, Windows Phone 8. Okay. Yeah. So no, then my whole thesis like, is was, shot the hell. <laughs> no, but, no, it's not, I, but when you see the Windows Phone 8 lined up with a Windows RT tablet and a Windows 8 tablet or 8 computer, yeah, yeah. the desktop is identical across almost. I mean, it really, you feel like this is one OS. Yeah. Now, that seems yeah. to me risky because it isn't one OS. <laughs> well, it sort of is. Oh. I mean, in, uh, well, you uh, can't you run know, the apps from one on the other, can you? Oh, you can't run the apps, that's true. Yeah. So that seems a little risky. But uh, on the other hand, from a user point of view, at least you know, well, I'll know how to use those. You know, one of the nice things that Microsoft had set up, which I had really never considered before I arrived here and actually used it, was this notion that, you know, Windows RT, of course, can't run desktop applications uh, like Windows 8 can. But they had two demos, both of them based on virtualization solutions, so that if, you know, people brought their own devices into work or if they decided to give out Windows RT devices for whatever reason, that you can still run Windows 8 apps on Windows RT using virtualization. So... Uh, they had a server out back. You could run a complete desktop environment, you know, CAD CAM app, you know, full screen video. It all works really great. You know, the touch screen works through the virtual environment. But you can also do this thing called remote app where you are basically just streaming an app to the device so that when the thing is in work, you could stream Adobe Photoshop. You could uh, stream, you know, Visual Studio. Microsoft, well, Microsoft Office is built in, but uh, maybe some of the Office apps that you don't have on the RT device. And it actually all works fine. And then you can bring it out in the road. And if you have an internet connection, you can do that from the road as well. And, By the uh, way, the of, Amazon uh, links are up now if you want to. Okay. All right, I'm going to be gone for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're selling a stylus with this, which is very strange. Uh, that is... That's very, bizarre. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's the seven-inch. Oh. oh, I don't see it. Damn you. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Paul, can I interrupt yes. your shopping yes. for a moment? Hey, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about the streaming thing. Is this the on-demand thing? that they've talked about with Office, or is this some other streaming thing? Oh, this is not new technology. So remote app is a... Oh, just I guess app. A, okay. It's a feature of MDOT, okay. basically. It's yeah. a... It's just yeah. it's literally remote, coming off Windows Server. You can do this today on, on the... Yeah. On Windows, Windows, on Windows 7. You know, it's, it's a way yeah. to, rather than locally install the application, you can do it through your data center. Yeah. And essentially, Windows RT, in this case, is treated like a thin client. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was the new Windows Server 2012 um, remote app features. So we got Paul doing some enterprise stuff, Mary Jo. Yep. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, I know. No. He, he was, he was we, getting no nervous. One, no he was one, twitching. No one felt good about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what my favorite thing I learned about uh, Windows RT this week was? Notepad is supported. <laughs> well, yeah. well, that's, but that's the I, point, right? In other words, because you know, oh, so I use we'll Notepad, and I was wondering okay. if they were going to support that because they've said, you know, the Office apps were going to run on the desktop, right? They said IE was going to run on the desktop, but nobody ever actually said Notepad, and I was really kind of worrying about that. I know it sounds nutty, but I use Notepad a lot, and I'm glad. <laughs> well, what about Minesweeper? Minesweeper, actually, Minesweeper is not in there. <sighs> But my, my That's it. I'm done. He's oh, leaving. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> but there is a Windows 8 app version of Minesweeper that's available now in the Microsoft Store, and it will run on Windows RT. If it doesn't, oh, oh all right. Well, then I'm happy. <laughs> Come back from the cliff, Leo. Solitaire. <laughs> Solitaire. Solitaire is in there. Yep. Solitaire is awesome, actually. Windows 8. Because yeah, because you're going like this. It's, it's like really, it's like deep. it's almost like cards. It's, it's multiple forms of Solitaire. They have a Mahjong game, Word of Mint. You know, there's a bunch of stuff. Well, as long as I got Notepad and Minesweeper and Wordament. It's in critical apps only on our team. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Now no, we're happy. It's a, it's a, so it's it's a, uh, felt snappy. Well, I guess uh, oh, yeah. it's, it, this is going to be specific to that hardware, although the Qualcomm chip will probably be in a lot of Windows RT. Will it be yeah. in all of them? No, there's three chipsets that are supported on uh, Windows RT, and I don't remember what the other two are. I don't know if Bradley knows. Probably but, the uh, Snapdragon, I would guess. I, 
um, the snap. It's snap. They're, they're all snap arm, arm, obviously. They're all based on arm yeah. designs. T, there's probably a TI Qualcomm. There's a TI and one. maybe an Nvidia. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. That's exactly yeah, that's, that's yeah. it. All right. What's that, that model number, Paul? Do you know? Nope. It was uh, there were a bunch of letters and numbers <laughs> commingled. Kind of a it weird. Was, it was. It started eight zero six zero A, and then after that, we just lost the plot. She just looked up, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Surface I'm is based worried. on Tegra. Although, again, to get back to this Amazon thing, one of the things that they were at pains to say is that their TI OMAP processor is fast, twice as fast as the Tegra three, which everybody is using. So that was interesting. I don't know this for a fact, but I would imagine on Windows RT that there is some design or device where, by which they intend for these things to all run yeah. at roughly the same speed. You know, for uh, interesting. Yeah, you don't want one to be really fast. Right. It would. It wouldn't be good for the platform if one of those machines was way faster than the others. Uh, I, I'm, that's how I take it. I'm just. I'm not actually positive that's the case, but it seems like that would be the case. So when you say it's just like Windows 8. Well, Mary Jo was wondering about Notepad. I mean, all those apps are in there. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Paint is in you there, know, and uh, that's what about, what about Office though? Does Office really work as well? Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's say Office twenty thirteen yeah. really work it's, as well. Yeah, it's identical. Is it? Is, it's, identical. it's not a, is it, touch. Is it a special Office? Well, yeah, no, they've obviously redone it for ARM. Yeah. It's the home and student version, and so there may be uh, individual features that aren't in you know that version of Word or that version of Excel. I mean, I'm sure there are a couple of those things, but as far as you know, the apps running, the speed at which they run, how they come up with that new screen with all the templates and everything. It's, it is identical. There's nothing to say about it. It's, and that's what's interesting about RT in general because it's just the same thing. If you run Windows 8 today, that's RT. It's exactly the same. And we got to have a quick play with the office, the, well, the new office, as we've been told to call it. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. and um, yeah, we had a good play with it. And it was just like using the word that you can use now. I mean, it's got the touch interface. You can type with on the keyboard. It was, it was good, actually. It was quite responsive because it's our first time really having a play with the ARM and the RT devices as well. Yeah, it was. Uh, so uh, maybe Bradley could tell us which was harder not to say uh, Metro or <laughs> oh, 2013. You so, know. a quick history. We had a, a bet going. So, every time Paul or I said one of the words we're not allowed to say, it was a dollar going into a kit to buy some beers. <laughs> so, yeah, I think Paul was up to about $20 on the first day. Um, I, I, no, I followed up pretty quick on the second day with the rehearsal. So, But on the main day, we didn't do too badly, actually. The new office was know, my one. Um, is Nigel, is he, it, Nigel's not your boss. Is it a co-worker or whatever? No, he's a co-worker. co-worker. Yeah. I, uh, Nigel, um, at one point, I think I could see him getting really nervous. And I, I was just saying something like, look, when I get up on stage and it's live, I'm just going to say what I want to say. And you could see him yeah. kind of like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I'm just, I'm just going to get up there and be like, Metro, Metro, Metro. <laughs> there, I said it thrice. <laughs> Put $3 in the jar. Yep. Just kidding, I'll, just, I'll pull out like a whatever crazy funny money they have here. and <laughs> Kiwi bucks, right? That's what you call them, Kiwi bucks. Yeah, you sell dollars. Yeah, Kiwi bucks. Kiwi bucks. <laughs> Kiwi bucks. <laughs> the Hobbit money from New Zealand. <laughs> um, well, that's good. So it sounds like you're bullish on uh, Windows RT, Paul. It was great. Yeah, it was really nice. They're lucky I didn't steal it. Hmm. Yeah, you wanted to. You wanted to steal quite a few things off the stage, actually. There was some good <laughs> stuff there. No fans, the thin and light, good screen, all that stuff. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing we got to play with that was really exciting was that uh, I'm always going to get the name. Right. Is it Pixel Sense Display or what it was it called? Perceptive. Uh, per Pixel. We are Perceptive Pixel. We got one down from um, the American office, which is really really cool. So it's um, it's the one that Steve Barmer has hanging in his office to use, and they shipped one down here in secret, and we got to play on that for three or four days. Is this beforehand. a manufacturer? What is this? No, it's, it's uh, the it's the company that we uh, Microsoft um, acquired five, six weeks ago. Um, it's the giant 82-inch 100-point touch oh. uh, device, Perceptive Pixel. So it is a stunning, stunning device. Oh. And we've got one of these here, and Paul and I got to play on it for a few days, which is really cool. You got the 82? Yeah, yeah. got the 82. Oh. So if you go to these Microsoft events for Windows 8 this year, they're always showing off this display because it's so, you know, it's incredible. You can is zoom this, in on the Is map. this what CNN is using uh, when they're doing the web? You know, they're doing all that. That's got to be. It's got to be that, it's right? It's so crazy. Looks like it. And it is really beautiful. It's got this kind of, it's hard to explain, but the, there's a quality to the display that is so excellent because it's kind of matte looking 
and it mm-hmm. doesn't really have reflections or glare from any angle, and it's just it's really beautiful. That's why CNN likes it. Yeah, you can't. It's, you know, that's the problem with these in studio lights. I think I need one. It's almost too oh, big. Yeah, definitely need one. How much are they? Yeah. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> they're about a, they're about eighty five thousand US. Oh, I think, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. How many yeah. Kiwi bucks would I need to? Uh... Well, many, many. That <laughs> oh, translates to that's a, I can yeah, times up, but I can do the money math. <laughs> it's, uh, okay, I don't want it. Eighty-five thousand. Yeah, I think so. Give or take. That's what they used to be. So, uh, one of the guys down here, Skip Parker, and he was setting it up with us, and it took six of us to lift it up onto its bracket. So oh, it's a it's a big thing. Wow. They were they had to bring it downstairs to the main room, you know, the the uh-huh. hub or whatever, and it wouldn't fit through the door, so they had to dismantle it again. <laughs> Well, they have other size. I could get the fifty-five inch. That's a little smaller. You could, but that's yeah. that's like the that's the <laughs> that's the queen size. That's queen it's, size. It's princess, princess. And then they yeah, have the like. twin bed size, the twenty-seven inch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You want the presidential size? You know, the yeah. eighty-two inch. I'd be almost embarrassed to use this twenty-seven inch. Should be like, exactly. What's what's wrong? Did they shrink your screen? <laughs> oh, oh, you <laughs> couldn't afford the big boy screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> so cute oh he's so cute it's little display yeah. really beautiful yeah. Yeah. it looks really good we've been showing off a whole lot of the new zealand windows 8 apps on it and just streaming you know everything's from even watching paul play uh, fruit ninja you know <laughs> poor we, we had two growing two growing middle-aged men playing fruit ninja in front of two and a half thousand people it was hilarious it was good fun <laughs> but it, it's, it's an amazing it sounds like it would be a lot of fun actually because you have to move your whole arm right so sh- yeah, exactly. oh, it's yeah. actually physically tiring yeah <laughs> that would be fun. Got, there's a height restriction too. You've got to be over five foot eight. We worked out. Otherwise, you can't. <laughs> you actually can't touch the top of the screen to swipe down. With you know, so we now have to have a little height restriction layer on it as well. So, yep. Well, I have. Uh, while you've been talking, I've purchased like I don't know how Damn many. You. I can't. It's still not coming up. For me. <laughs> I bought. I just bought a crap load of Kindle Fires. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. It's very upsetting, one for Leo. Everyone. One for one Did for everyone. The- did you get the HD version or which one? I got well, like I said, uh, I got one of everything. I think. <laughs> I um, looks like I got the set. I mean, I, I really I was clicking so fast. I don't know what I bought. I got a seven inch. I got an eight point nine inch. Looks like I got a leather case. Uh, nice. Yeah, and some espresso spoons. That was just an accidental. I just that was a you know a misfire. While you're there, but I'll <laughs> yeah I'll take it. And then apparently yeah. there's a special charger they sell separately. The power fast for accelerated charging charger. Mm. Hmm. Accelerated charging. Yeah. I only got one of those. I figured how much acceleration can one boy take. <laughs> and I did not get the 3G, the 4G, the LTE. That seems to me yeah, yeah, not yeah. very It seems kind of crazy to yeah. me. Um, yeah. So I don't know when it'll come. I, this is not coming up for me, and I can only imagine it's because I'm in this country that is not the United States. No, it's not coming for, for anybody. Somebody in the chat room just gave me a magic link. Well, can oh. you please give it to me? <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> okay, Amazon.com slash GP. Here, oh, type, this on, on. type this in. Type this in, Paul. This now. is great broadcast history here. <laughs> it gets worse. Slash yep. GP slash product slash B008. These are all in uppercase. GG. Wait, B was uppercase? <laughs> <laughs> he had enough trouble with the uh, reference can, names. Can you see like, the screen? B B zero zero eight G G C A V M all uppercase. Pulls the up multitasking. <laughs> I want I can now. That's well. well that's the way. Fine. But that's the seven inch. Right. What do you want? The not the big one. I want both. Well, that's what I did. I just bought everything. <laughs> And I, I made a mistake. I didn't get the leather case with stand for the little one. So I better. I got Ooh, more. Sh- nice. I've got more shopping to do. <laughs> Mary Joe's just like, what the hell have yeah. I gotten myself into? Mary Joe, aren't you buying one? I'm thinking about buying the paper white. I, I like that one. The paper white looks. I don't, we didn't even mention the paper yeah. white. That's the new e. I don't really. You know, I like my e reader to be an e reader. Yeah. And- no, I know what you mean. Yeah. I like my Zoom to be a music player. I don't like my phone to be my music player. I'm old fashioned like that. And once you once you get to that so page, weird. are you getting the page, Paul? Now because it's got links to all the others. As I well. am. Yes, I, I am. can see yes. him. Yeah, come on, you can see him. Come on, Paul. <laughs> He's, He's a... lost focus now completely. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a short break while Paul purchases more Kindles than he can afford. <laughs> 
And then um, they'll be waiting for you when you get back from New Zealand. I th- I think that I just you know we uh, look at we, we, except for you Bradley you actually work for a company the rest yes. of us <laughs> <laughs> right the, the rest of us we're this it's is the on and, under and order stuff online we don't have a horse yeah. in the race we just it's great to see as a consumer a, a lot of choice mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. and and companies com- in the rough and tumble and you know what's really interesting here is that I think Amazon. Very cleverly, by not doing Android, by completely skinning it, is I've, obviously they've got somebody examining it with a fine tooth comb, making sure they can't be sued. Yeah, and I'm sure Apple's got lawyers going. Come on, please, <laughs> let there be an infringing product in here somewhere. Just one feature, one slide to unlock, please, because they'd love to get an injunction at this point. This is uh, this is scary stuff. Well, I remember when they were doing the announcement, they even announced with the exchange, they had an exchange email app or something coming through. So obviously, mm, they're licensing EAS and everything as well. So they're obviously being careful about what they do right. um, and looking through from that side. So yeah, oh, it yeah. looks good. I mean, when Paul's offline, I'm going to actually get him to put his credit card in and get me one too. So. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know that. Yet, so. Paul, you owe Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> there are rounded corners though, so, um, you know, you never know. There are around. There are around in the corner. Um, you also did you get a chance to look at the the new um, keyboard and mouse? The new keyboard and mouse. It says so oh, right here. Yeah. Microsoft's Windows Eight hardware, mice and oh, keyboards. So, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. So Microsoft has is releasing this fall a bunch of new. Well, yeah, we showed new, them before. Guess, the, the wedge. Yes. Yeah. So I actually, yeah, I, I got uh, the wedgy mouse. Yeah, so I've been reviewing those this week. Uh, the Wedge mouse and the Wedge keyboard, I think, are aimed specifically at tablets, and they're decent for that purpose. I wrote, I did write one full-length article with it. I will probably never do that again. It's kind of a small keyboard, but I think for mo- most people don't write like I write. So uh, if you think about typical tablet usage, and you can use the cover for the keyboard as a stand for your tablet, oh. uh, it's actually not too shabby. It's kind of a nice little setup. Uh, so if you want that kind of stuff, it's nice. Yeah, so that works okay. You know, the Sculpt stuff, I don't think is a big deal. Uh, the Sculpt line is uh, really just an update of stuff that they had last year. And uh, now it's just all Bluetooth. So they got rid of the little dongles and, and you have to have Bluetooth in your device to use it. Um, and those those are fine. There's not, it's, it's just nothing special. Uh, I'm just, uh, one of the question marks that was uh, left over after the uh, Amazon event was, what about outside the U.S.? And this little pop-up on the Amazon site makes it very clear that you yep. must be in physically present in the U.S. and have a U.S. billing address to purchase, download, or stream movies and TV shows. With a U.S. credit card, you can purchase apps and music for Kindle. Yep. Uh, but but uh, this is a U.S.-only device. I think, you know, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, they have uh, VPN solutions for that latter issue. That's right. Yeah. So uh, you can get you can get U.S. House. credit cards, right? I mean, that's not impossible. Uh, it's hard from this part of the world. It really you is. don't you can't get a dropship address in the U.S. or something like that. Um, there's you. I think there's U.S. Unlocked and a few other places, but it'd just be quicker for me to pull a move over to Paul's house. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> party at Paul's house in Dedham, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be a little frustrating, it. though. Uh, I know my friends in uh, Canada and other other uh, places are just are frustrated when these things happen. It's like, sure. well, you know, and we make a big deal about it because we're a U.S. based uh, broadcaster. But um, I just want to point out, by the way, that I just ordered three Kindle tablets, and it costs less than the mid price version of the yeah. iPad. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. <sighs> three, yeah, seven inch, nine inch, and then the 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 white and the paper white. Oh, you one of each. Yeah, yeah that's that's kind of what I do. That's our. By the way, folks, don't you know? Don't be jealous. Don't be haters. I actually, <laughs> the, the other actually the other way to put this it is our would job. Be to say, do not try this at home. Yeah. No, this is what we have to do. We don't want to. We would love to just put <laughs> yeah, that plastic away. Money. <laughs> I would love not to have stuff coming to my house on a regular day. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. we have to. That is our job. It's and impulsive. by the way, like thank, thanks to uh, the U.S. taxpayer for subsidizing this. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> it is tax deductible. By the way, don't think, don't think there's too much of a tax subsidy there. It's not that <laughs> no, good. No, no, no. <laughs> I do feel a little like Mitt Romney, though. It, and I... <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> Listen, I, I'd love to keep talking about Kindles, but I have to go to my racehorse now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we now know why Paul's in New Zealand. He's stashing his loot. I'm going to put it on my yacht and then sit to Wellington. <laughs> All right, Therat. Now, let's talk a little bit about Nokia World, because uh, Mary Jo Foley... Yeah. 
has been following the developments. I thought uh, the 920 looked – the thing that's most interesting to me – now, by the way, the stock market hated uh, Nokia's Actually, that's what I want to ask Mary Jo about. So, yeah, What was that all about? about? Looking at that this from not... the far away, I just, want, I just yeah. want to ask you this question real quick. Yeah, the, the reaction remotely has been Nokia disappoints. But you were there. I mean, what, what was it like? Was it, was it really like? It doesn't seem okay, disappointing. So, no. What was disappointing was the lack of information. It wasn't the devices. You know, they yeah. got up there. They showed these two really new uh, awesome phones that we were not allowed to touch, by the way. We, uh, I, no I had to beg. No. There's, there's, a, there's a familiar story. <laughs> yeah. I had to I beg for somebody to put phone, one on my hand so I could feel on the weight, hand. but they wouldn't. They would not let me bring it close to me or scroll it or do anything. I will put this on your hand, but if you move your arm one inch closer to you or in any way bend your fingers, you are dead, lady. I did think about running off with one. I, okay, I admit that, but I didn't. Well, what and, what's um, your impression? I mean, that, that 920 looked pretty nice to me. It looks really nice. It looks super nice. But, it, you know, it feels kind of like the Microsoft Surface announcement. Like, I want right. to try it, right? I want to try scrolling on it. I want to see how it, how it feels, how it works. But we weren't allowed to do that yet. But, that, you know, there, I think the reason the Nokia stock tanked was they didn't say when it would be available. They didn't even announce a single carrier. Like, everybody had predicted AT&T was going to be part of this announcement. They weren't even mentioned. Um, no, They wouldn't even say anything about when, except sometime in Q4 there will be some of these phones available in limited markets. So I think people just were like, wow, no price, no availability. What, yeah. what the heck? And that was perceived as a weakness uh, in Nokia's. Uh, one of the reasons Nokia has been stumbling is because they didn't make the deals in the U.S. with the carriers that the other guys did. That I Nokia was selling Nokia unlocked phones because they couldn't. What Microsoft requires, you know. Yeah. So in this is words, a Microsoft. Microsoft I think so, because Microsoft hasn't fully... Just uh, if you could just darken Bradley for this portion of the show. The, uh, <laughs> I'll just turn his mic off. Go ahead, Bradley. Well, Try yeah, to yeah, talk. Yeah. Microsoft has not fully revealed Windows Phone 8. And God knows why they're on whatever schedule they're on. But I, I think the reason Mary Jo couldn't touch the screen and scroll through it is she might have seen Windows Phone 8 features. Right. That she's not supposed to see right. yet. And yeah. they can't do more than they're doing because for whatever reason, they're on this revelation schedule they're on. It's too bad. I mean, the sad part is, you know, we I know from my sources that the launch of, of Windows Phone 8 is going to be on October 29th. But Microsoft still hasn't said that. Nokia couldn't wow. say it. I mean, I tried to get everybody to say it at the launch. I, I was like sneaking around tables, offering people beer. I tried everything. Let's see if we, let's see if we can get Bradley to say it. <laughs> Bradley? Bradley, your video. Bradley? <laughs> he seems to have had a technical difficulty keeping him from speaking. <laughs> Um, Nokia apparently uh, featured video footage um, in yeah, in its ads that was purported to be uh, shot with the uh, the camera. Even though, by the way, Apple has done the same kind of fakery, and it never really resulted in the same kind of unbelievable response. And then, of course, Nokia apologizes publicly, which is crazy. You know, it's an ad. Is anything in an ad ever real? Ever? Well, but in in this this happened in, in Britain and in the UK they're very strict about uh, lying right. in ads. It's much more so than we are in the states, where really anything you could say anything you want. Let me just be as the long first as you don't say it's healthy. You can't say this it's is, healthy. This is um, yeah. this is not what Nokia needs right now, you know. And I I just I feel bad for these guys because they deserve better than this. And I, I but on the other hand, they kind of brought this one on themselves. As, yeah. You know, the the dark side of. Uh, partnering with Microsoft is, in this case, you know, is they have to kind of go along with whatever their schedule is. Nokia does not control their own destiny. They can't come out and say, this device is going to cost this much and it's coming out on this date because Microsoft has never said when Windows Phone 8 is going to come out. It's just too bad. Uh, on the other hand, I am very interested in this pure view camera that's going to be in the yeah. 920. Um, yeah. You know, Nokia has this pure view, what is it, 41 megapixel camera that uh, yep. is, is interesting. I don't know if it's but but this but that's that's a selling point that actually could get people's attention. If if Windows eight Windows Phone eight is not enough, the fact right. that this might be the best camera phone available yeah. could make a yep. difference, right? Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's we were, an eight point we seven. Yeah, eight eight point seven megapixels on the. Um, but it's more than that because it's got yeah. it's a lot of light yeah. in. It's got it's you know yeah. it's yeah it's more than just the megapixels in this. Yeah, and the we'll stabilization see. they right. showed uh, optical uh, image all that. That's awesome stuff. Yeah. 
You yeah. never see optical apparently, images. Apparently, when you're making videos with it, there'll be a camera crew that rides behind the white pants. <laughs> that was the funny and, thing, uh, is that you could see, in the, apparently, if you look closely at the ad, you could see the camera crew. So yeah. it kind of gave away. <laughs> it's like watching a TV show right. and the boom mic comes in from the top and they don't edit it out. You know? Like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, is, is, is there some great corporate thing that's at stake with this phone? Do you think someone could have paid attention to this? That's uh, crazy to me. Uh... Still, um, impressive phone, right, Mary Jo? By the way, somebody wants to yeah, know the it, black. Is it matte or uh, shiny? Did you notice? Um, I didn't know. I think everything's that. matte because they're not. Oh, no, people have been freaking out because supposedly some of these colors are, in fact, shiny, which oh. doesn't make a yeah. lot of sense to me since they're supposed to be all, um, you know, unibody Lucid, designs. Right. Yeah. right. The, yeah, the, um, only- the 920, the 920s are shinier, definitely, oh, um, than the others, I think. Huh. Yeah. Um, and and this, then, this surprised me. There's a micro SD card slot or not? I, I, was, I was confused. It's oh, not one. in the 920. There isn't one. Um, but, but there is in the 820? There is one in the 820. Well, so here's yeah. why, though. The, the, the high-end one has 32 gigs of internal storage, right. and it's a unibody design, which may make that sort of it, expansion yeah. more difficult. Uh, the 820 only has, I want to say, 8 megabytes of so storage. So it needs some more storage. And you can yeah. expand it with micro SD. Got yeah. it. Yeah. But that's also good because it means they've licked the micro SD problem that Windows Phone 7 had, right? That's that's Windows Phone 8. is, That's a feature of yeah. Windows Phone 8. Yeah, yeah. It, the, now you can finally have SD cards. You're going to see micro SD on almost all oh, Windows that's Phone good. 8. That's, that's, I think that's, that's huge. huge. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, the wireless charging um, was a thing a ton of people were super interested in too. They were showing on, on the Fat Boy pillow thing and they were also showing it on their own charger, the wireless charger, using the Qi technology. A lot of people... We're gathered around there and is, checking that out. Is that out. inductance so that was, charging? What is? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was the fat boy pillow cute? Could you sleep on it? <laughs> was it fat? <laughs> it was so cute. I wanted one. <laughs> it looks like an airplane pillow. You, know? you can get them to match the colors of your phone, so you can really go all out. It, it, it's a pillow? It's not a, like a hard... Yeah, it's a little it's pillow. Like you know, it looks like a pillow. pillow. Yeah. It's mm. a cute little pillow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's very strange. Yep, that that's not it. That's not it. There. That's, that's just not a regular. It. No, that's the that's, that's the cheat charger. You got to search that's for search charge. for fat white pillow Lumia or something. You'll find it. It's uh, it's really cute looking. Yeah, yeah. We uh, they had a party after after um after the event, and we went up on the roof deck for the party, and they had the giant fat boy pillows that are like <laughs> couches up there. <laughs> Which is really cool. Did you feel uh, charged when you sat on it? I felt so charged. If, if I had been there, Mary Jo, we would have had a fat boy pillow fight. <laughs> you would have, you would have <laughs> We've seen you uh, work with pillows before. Um, we should have done that. There were a whole ton of Windows Weekly fans at this event. Um, we could have reenacted yeah. the pillow fight. That would have been cool. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> um, that's interesting that they chose a pillow, but I kind of like that because you just put your... you put. Oh, they'll be in virgin lounges yeah. and embedded in tables. Yeah, at, yeah. Uh, in the uh, coffee, coffee bean leaf, yeah, and tea yeah, leaf, that's yeah, coffee. and tea leaf. That's kind of neat. Yeah, uh, and yeah. the good yeah. news about that is there'll always be an open pillow because I don't think there's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be like a rush <laughs> for the coffee bean <laughs> fat boy pillows. You can well, strike I, I, <laughs> this. Can't be the only device that's gonna have this kind of inductive charging. This is right. like a wireless charging standard, so. Uh, is, I'm yeah. sure the whole world will stand up and applaud when Apple announces it next week or whatever. But other other <laughs> devices will have it, you know. <laughs> well, it's not it's not that. I mean, inductance charging has been around for a long time. You can get it in third sure. third party no, aftermarket stuff. In other words, you can buy. It's nice uh, to have it built in because you don't have to have a big fat ass pillow. Devices, right. though, they get you know they need something soft. You don't want a big fat ass on your big fat boy <laughs> pillow. <'cause>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. That uh, pillow is for my phone, not for your <laughs> not butt. For <laughs> you get off of my. Hey, you get off of my pillow. All right. Um, uh, so, the, I, you know, I, oh, guys, I'm rooting for Nokia. I don't know why. I'm not rooting for Rim at this point. No. But I am rooting for Nokia. I lo- I, I think the too, Lumia I, was a beautiful phone. I think I can't these guys get out of their own way. I, it's amazing to me that this whole thing wasn't a huge success, you know? It's just, it's too bad because the devices are good. They obviously have good technology. And they just seem to steal defeat from the jaws of victory. Now, this good news in, we don't know if uh, who the carriers are for the Nokias, but at least we know Verizon will be carrying Windows Phone 8. 
Yeah. I know. Yeah. This was the best news of my week, actually. <laughs> yeah. Just CNET, one. CNET, got, CNET got, um, Verizon, somebody at Verizon in marketing to admit on the record, we're going to have multiple window, Windows Phone 8 devices this year in the fourth quarter. Awesome. That's really good yes. news. Because, you know, Finally. I have to say that I, I just want a Verizon. I want Verizon LTE. It's on yeah. Some phone. I don't care what phone it is. Yeah. I know. Uh, and I think that, that that's going to be, I think increasingly that's going to be what consumers want, especially when they yep. see the speeds. I know. And they're not going to be satisfied if, uh, you know, with AT&T's crappy LTE. But if you don't want to wait, the trophy is a fine phone. I mean, there's no reason not to go with the, the trophy. phones are fine. <laughs> he's, jo he's joking now. He's teasing me. He's can teasing you. Don't listen Please, to him. Can I really hit him? The trophy? Yeah. The trophy is fine. I have a trophy. I use it still. It's good. It's a good, solid phone. No problems. But it's not like a Does Lumia it have a rotary or... dial on it? I can't remember. It's kind, <laughs> it does. Of, it does. It's kind of an old phone. <laughs> you yeah. do. I mean, but you do feel like the Lumia 900 is the best in class. And the 920 should be its follow up. But you, but yeah, you, flagship. but, but you got to know flagship, but you got to know where, where can I get one? And I don't think consumers buy on. I buy unlocked phones. I think that Samsung phone looks really good. I think the A20 looks really good, yeah. too, to be honest. Yeah. In fact, yeah. if it wasn't for the camera, deciding between an A20 and a 920 might have been really difficult. Interesting. Yeah. Is, the, is the, the A20 smaller, just like the 800 smaller? Yeah. Than, yeah, okay. It has a clip-on case um, you can get that adds NFC yeah, and... Removable um, backs, different colors. Yeah. And wireless oh. charging, yeah. And that means removable battery, which is something I look for in a phone, to be honest. I don't yeah, like you can the change the color with it. So it, 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 you can personalize the device. Uh, it's got some nice, you know, aspects to it. Did Mary Jo, uh, the chat room wants to know, did you ask why no cyan in the 920? Everybody likes that blue... I did. Lumia. Yep, I did yeah, ask they that. They said, um, they said um, we might have cyan at some point in the future, but right now we do not. Huh. That's all they would say. Yep. Hmm. I don't Genius know. Yeah, marketing. it's weird Genius. because that, that was a, such a popular color. It was you like can imagine this is a conversation color. in Nokia marketing. Hey, Bob, what's the most popular color? Cyan? Yeah, let's, let's, let's not dump make that. that one. <laughs> Too many people buying that phone. Hard to make. <laughs> we made a real video. Why don't we fake it with a camera? People were liking the canary <laughs> yellow. The canary yeah, yellow thing. was nice. Yeah. I mean, it's paint stuff. <laughs> Lipstick red. I don't like the out. yellow. I think that's kind of ugly. You don't? No. They were really yeah, a lot of people liked it at the event. I'd have to look at it, maybe. Maybe, maybe it's the phone for emergency workers. <laughs> it does look like that. <laughs> hey, if you fall you in the ocean. It is 911. That's the only phone yeah. number that works. They'll, they'll find you fast. So what does HTC need to do in the next couple of weeks, then, to trump Samsung and Good uh, question. Nokia? Good question. They, right. they, they're the ones who are waiting. They, they, they said, yeah. well, we'll wait and see what iPhone does. Yeah, what could they do? Yeah. Well, they're going to they're going to have an announcement in New York on September 19th. Right. HTC is. Um yep. they're going to announce some Windows phones, maybe at least one, maybe more. There's a bunch of code names out there floating around for these phones. Um I think you're designer. going Mary Jo, yes? Yeah, I All am right. going. Yes. You are, yeah. Are you so going? I think I'm going as well. Yeah, I think so. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, so um what do they have to do? They have to come up with a really great looking device. I mean, they you know, they've got to have something that's like a hero device, I think, because they, the rumor is, another rumor is that we don't, we don't know if the 920, the Lumia 920 is going to come to Verizon. That's not guaranteed. So as some people are saying the hero device on Verizon for a Windows phone is going to be an HTC device and it has to be great if, if that's well, going to be what Well, have you seen happens. this, what's it called, the HTC One? Love the One. That's an yep. Android that, phone, yep. of course. Mm. But that, that would be a if they, phone. That that's, would be great. Yeah. Put, put Windows Phone 8 on that and... And that's yeah. what Samsung yeah. basically is doing. Samsung's taking its Android phones. Right, and, they've and always done that. Yeah. By the way, I have no problem with that at all because oh. those phones are beautiful. Yeah. Well, and you get yeah. economy of scale. You're making a bunch of them anyway. I mean, it just and you've and you've learned how to design works. No reason not to do that. <laughs> do you think they'll have to super glue like uh, sharp corners on the edges so you, you know you don't have like the rounded <laughs> rectangle effect? Oh, okay. They'll just be like they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll give you the package so you can just glue them on yourself with the little paper instructions that how how you have to put them on. Now, somebody uh, in the chat room is saying he has an HTC One and it's a slug, but I mean, on paper, that's a oh. very fast phone. I, I'm surprised yeah, to hear that. It, uh, Windows Phone is probably a lot more efficient than Android. It is so. very efficient. That's one thing we know from day yeah. one. Yep. Designed to be snappy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good word, Leo. I like that. Snappy. Snappy. Well, no, that is a word. That, that, I think that's a very descriptive word of what you want in a phone. No, I, I mean, I wasn't a being A touch device. Yeah, it should be snappy. It should feel yeah. fast. 
I know it's hard you to know, tell. The, the, I can't. I don't know. <laughs> I want the trophy after it's you. Literally <laughs> you, you, you. You know, I, I, I don't, don't know whether to believe you or not. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, What's, what, but the thing that Nokia is starting to win me over about, and I never really thought they would on this point, but they, they have a lot of exclusive to Lumia apps, um, yes. like the Nokia yeah. Music app, which is the streaming music app they now have in the U.S., um, the, the, new, the new City Lens, which is their augmented reality app. I mean, they have these things that it's like, huh, that kind of pushes you more to going, maybe, you know, even if I can't get the best Nokia phone on Verizon, maybe I would take the 820 or right. whatever comes out on Verizon because I could not, get those apps like and I can't get them otherwise. You're not making a huge compromise there. The 820 looks great. Did you get the sense, yeah. Mary Jo, that they had deals in the works and they just weren't able to announce them or that they... I I kind of feel like that was the case because so many people were saying they were going to announce this device with AT and T. Like, and in fact, people were saying that was why Verizon and Motorola were in one side of New York making an announcement, <laughs> right. and it was going to be AT and T and right. Nokia why, why on the other side. New York. Why Why would this be in New York? Why would you do that? You have to think that that's was Verizon's home yeah. turf, right? Right. It's yeah. crazy that they would go to. That by the way, not just go to New York. But go to New York on the opening day of their own annual trade show and have your CEO and all of your top-level Windows Phone executives, not in Helsinki, but at some other event where then you <laughs> announce not the day it's coming out, not the carriers and not the... Are you kidding me? No. That's, That's a good crazy. point. That's a good point. Crazy. Yeah. 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 And no... Uh, what's, what's the deal with the SDK? It's delayed? Uh, that was another oh, the, problem. Leo. There's no SDK. I don't know what where these rumors started. <laughs> if you wanted to develop for Windows Phone 8, too bad. Too bad. Huh. Just yep. too bad. Yeah. So in, at the end of the uh, Nokia announcement, they post a, a blog post up on Microsoft <laughs> saying, by the way, you know that you know that SDK you guys were all asking about at the event? Um, oh, it's way, that SDK we told you would be up <laughs> by the end of the summer. That's where the SDK rumors came from when they announced... Yeah. That we're going to give it to you soon. It's interesting that they announced that, though, yep. at the event. I thought that, I mean, that's kind of bold. Remember the scene in Star Wars where Obi-Wan Kenobi tried to explain to Luke Skywalker that he didn't really lie about Darth Vader and that if looked at in a certain way, what I said was true. Depends what, what, think, what you mean by like, is. It just, yeah, it depends on <laughs> your definition of how we deliver it to you publicly. What's your yeah. definition of is? Yeah. SDK, what does that mean? <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, I feel really bad about this one. And again, I think I the reason is the same with the Nokia stuff, where if you had the SDK, you would see Windows 8, Windows Phone 8 features yeah. that they've not announced, yeah. ra rather arbitrarily, by the yeah. way, and don't want to announce yet for some reason, iPhone 5 possibly. But the thing is, the Windows Phone features don't compete with the iPhone. They compete with iOS 6. And we already know what iOS 6 is. That's right. So why wouldn't you just announce what Windows Phone 8 is? That's a good point. Yeah. Don't ask why. That's silly. Yeah, so what they're, they're going to do is... Am too logical they're gonna, for marketing? Right? I know. There's no why. They're, they're going to expand. They're going to expand the amount of people who can have access to the near final SDK um, next week or so. And then the final yeah. SDK comes out when Windows Phone 8 is announced. So I guess October 29th. Um, but, yeah, people who are trying to develop apps that take advantage of features in Windows Phone 8 that are not in Windows Phone 7 are yeah. worried because how can you do this without the final SDK? And it's going to well, come out the day the phone comes out. On the other hand, though, is how could you create, even if you had access to the SDK and you could write to an emulator, you don't have a device. Mm -hmm. And so how could you, with any sense of credibility, right. sell an app in the Windows Phone store on the day that Windows Phone 8 comes no, out that takes can, advantage of NFC yeah, or whatever. You can get right up to that point and then get the device and be ready in a few days as so opposed you're to starting... You think, from, you think developers would want to get going early? Yes. Is that what you just said? I'm just you're thinking. Crazy. You are crazy. <laughs> just a simulator. That's all I ask. <laughs> just a simulator. Uh, where, where's my stick to poke, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> now we know why you're sitting next to each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a scrum after recording. Is done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. Uh, Microsoft is... Uh, I th Anything else to say about the HTC? I think we mentioned all of that. So I'm just looking at your notes here, and I think we covered yeah, no, that a little bit out of order. Microsoft launches Windows Server 2012. 
Yeah, so it was good for us down here. We were the um, first country in the world to actually launch Windows Server. So, yeah, for a small country, it's a, it's a nice privilege to actually have. Um, Is that simply country. because of your position across the international date line or... Oh, yeah. no, it's because we had Paul Throck coming down. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was. Like, in some ways, I demanded it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, one of, it was in, in Paul's rider. Right, yeah. right. Like, I'm not coming here unless we launch server. <laughs> I want flowers in my room. I want mineral water, and I want server 2012 yes. launch. That's yes. what I want. So, yes. um, though, so the reality for us, it was in, normally everything goes to Australia because obviously size and scale, but um, we're actually doing some really innovative stuff for us with um, Windows Server 2012. So we were able to get some really good cases, um, customers coming out and talking to us around it. And yeah, they gave us that privilege, which is really, really kind of cool for us. I'm just going to sit here and, and, and just bask okay, in your glory, Bradley. Bask in the glory of uh, Windows Server <laughs> yeah. 2000. Let us geek out about It server. was good fun. <laughs> it was good fun. We had a good party last night. Mary what? Jo would have loved it. Lots of beer. We don't have time for the full presentation, <laughs> but you want to talk about any of the new features of... Uh, storage spaces is a really good one for me. Um, the VDI stuff built in is a really, really nice one. Um, and I think the simplified, uh, the networking elements too. I think, you know, those three for a lot of organizations are big cost savers where people are going, yeah, we're going to take a serious look. And uh, it boots well. into Metro. Hooray! <laughs> Windows no. UI. Windows UI. That's yeah. a dollar for Leo. <laughs> <laughs> does it, does that, it actually build into, no, it doesn't. It does, yeah. It yeah. does. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everyone's really excited about that. One. I know that's a real selling point. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what I thought was interesting. So it, it, around the world, they had a virtual launch of Windows Server 2012 this week, and their messaging around it I thought was really unusual and interesting. Like they didn't really drill down on features or say here's what's new. Yeah. Um, they took it way up a number of levels, and they talked about this idea of the cloud OS, which they're starting to champion more. So. The, the way they're positioning this now is Windows Server is the on-premises part of the cloud OS, like it's your private cloud operating system. Azure is your public cloud operating system. And then there are people who host the operating system and they're, you know, another leg of the of the stool. Like so, hybrid, hybrid cloud or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like the hybrid cloud part. So um, it, it, that's that was what they talked about in, in the big launch that everybody had a little trouble viewing because the feed was a little I know I was going to say but, did you actually um, see it because I couldn't get it to work <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I got I got it to work halfway oh. um, but yeah that I think it's interesting to say, see that's kind of like how the new positioning is because Microsoft's been wrestling a bit I think with how to talk about the cloud and now this is the new way the new new way to talk about the cloud right yeah, and I think, look, feedback from the people we had at our event here was it was really good for us not to do a feature-by-feature -feature comparison to the likes of VMware, whereas in the past it felt like the CPU wars, where, you know, my CPU is 2.4 and AMD would come across and say 2.5 and all that sort of stuff. So people are actually liking that we're trying to integrate public and private cloud into the same device or operating system now. So, yeah, it got it's, the messaging has been well-received so far. Um, Oh, yeah, I just think we've, now it's people deploying and getting on top of it. And, of course, Paul's number one uh, question, what am I going to be replacing Windows Home yeah. Server with? So now that you've seen it, uh, Windows 8 or uh, This is Windows a tough Server? one for me because I, I, I actually really, really like Windows Server 2012 Essentials. Love it. You know, it's, uh, yeah. this is a product that replaces Home Server, Small Business Server Standard and Essentials, as well as uh, Windows Storage Server 2008 R2, you know, basically four products in one. And so it does all of this stuff. It's got all the storage stuff. It's got the centralized PC backup stuff. It's got the media sharing stuff yeah. from home server. It's kind of a combination of all that stuff. The only problem with it is that it's not super inexpensive like home server was. It's about 450 bucks, you know, just for the software. I think they expect to sell most copies of it on a low-end server, which is always the case with server. Um and so I, it's one of those things where I'll need to see hardware before I can understand whether I can even recommend this to normal people. But the other, the other aspect of it is simply that with Windows 8, you get most of the best stuff that I just described. You know, you get all the storage st uh, space stuff. You get obviously get media sharing and home group uh, support. Um, actually, you don't get home group support and essentials. So it's, it's a lot of that stuff. It's, you, you don't get centralized PC backup, and that may or may not be a big deal for people. Uh, with home networks and so forth. So it's still something I haven't resolved. I think my basic advice is going to be that for most people, Windows 8 is actually going to be a better solution. But, you know, for people who are in IT, and I think a lot of the people who listen to this show, 
Um, the only major feature that Windows Server Essentials is missing is the Hyper-V stuff. Um, but it gives you the rest of it. It's, it's, it's a domain. You know, it has a lot of its storage spaces, of course. It's got all that awesome serverness to it. And I, I think for me, I'm going to be in kind of a weird spot where I, for, I, I can't not use server. Um, and I'm going to be going with essentials. I just don't know that I can recommend that to normal people. But I think for IT pros especially, this is a great way to get a really inexpensive server into your house use it and understand it and that that stuff will translate to what you do at work too. So um, I'm, I'm going to be using essentials, but I, I, it's just a question of whether I would never put an essential server in my parents' house, you know? So I, I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing. I, I why don't know why to, not? They're not running it anyway, right? Aren't you running it for them? Yeah. That's what I want to do is like more it support for my parents. You know, I, they can't, <laughs> but, but could they father, do it? My father can't find the, my pictures folder, Leo. I don't want to. <laughs> well, the no server is a good stuff. idea for him, right? Yeah. Yeah, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. The cloud. Yeah. Sure. But look, at the end of the day, we're doing price comparison. You just spent, you were going to spend $499 on a Kindle LTE device, $450 for a piece of software that I'm doesn't sorry, work. If you're trying to throw logic in my face, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's, uh, that's just not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Price comparison. Hello. <laughs> Fair enough. And we Did should mention two <laughs> other um, related <laughs> products that shipped this week. Uh, Windows yep. Server Storage. Yeah, they Windows never talked about that storage before. server 2012, right? Right. And uh, the Hyper-V server, the standalone Hyper-V server 2012 also yep. shipped this week. Right. With the low, low price yep. of free. Yeah. Free. Yep. That's getting a lot of free interest as well. beer. Yep. <laughs> Lip, yeah. Speaking <laughs> of beer, have you tried the uh, president's uh, beer recipe yet, Mary Jo? No, but so many people forwarded it to me. Isn't that cool that... <laughs> That he among yeah. uh, you know that he's a home brewer like in the kitchen yeah. of the of the family residence at the White House. You think he has like a cognac recipe? He's making beer. <laughs> you know, there's a still out the back of the White yeah. House or something. No? But, uh, <laughs> it's just uh, well, it's great for your hobby, Mary Jo. It's going to bring new yeah. prominence to the beer making uh, yeah. fraternity. The beer something. making <laughs> liberal elite. The liberal elite <laughs> beer makers. What? You, Coors is America. not good enough for you. You don't. You, uh, you don't like our Budweiser. What, is that you can't drink grain alcohol like a real American? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with ethanol? Huh? That's what I want to know. Um, oh, apparently the president actually isn't doing it. He's got a, he's got people who do that for him. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. He is I, yeah, I actually, you really wouldn't want. <laughs> He's got other things to think about. You wouldn't really want him in there, you know, checking the beer. Wait, a minute, excuse me, uh, I missed, hey, uh, Mr. Putin. I gotta go. Yeah, hold on a second. I gotta get this. Right I gotta get the beer. Um, I, w I learned a, on a completely unrelated note that Dvorak, John C. Dvorak, makes vinegar and has been for decades. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, wow, that is such a multi-layered comment. <laughs> we spent like an hour after Twit last night, uh, last Sunday, talking about vinegar. Is, he, is, is his mouth not pursed up enough normally that he has to <laughs> put something, you know, so bitter in there? He's a very sour man. Um, all right. Uh, I just want you to know, I thought you'd be proud of this. And I mentioned it on our This Week in Google show that I have modified the desktop, the front page of my Android device to have the Bing search on there. Wow, look at oh, you. Look at that. Well, and it's kind of, uh, it has, I, you know, I for want of a better word, a Metro UI. I don't know what that means. I know. I know. I don't know what yeah. to call this now. Would you call it the an all new UI perhaps? It's, a, it's a kind well, of a Windows yeah. phone-like UI. I don't yeah, know. look at you. Look at that. That's what the, uh, that's what the, the ATIV is going to look like right there. Yeah, it is because this is a Galaxy S3. So the ATIV, a well, or a TIV, I think is what we call it, by the way. Rhymes a, with a leave, uh, we've decided. Um, and that's the Bing interface on there. And, you know, the voice recognition is actually at least as good as Google's. Mm -hmm. And lots of pretty pictures. I like it. It's, very, it's actually the, very attractive. You could almost say a Windows UI on a Google device. Isn't that weird? But that's what the ATIV yeah. will look like, isn't it? Um, and, and the main reason is because I want to win a Surface. Me too. <laughs> is that part of the deal? Uh, well, according to... Kind of, you've usurped your own recommendation for this product. Yeah. It's big. They, apparently, they're... Doing it uh, they told me to bing it on, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Bing it on. Let's get ready to bing. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is kind of an interesting uh, new 
I don't know. Where's my so how do I campaign? Yeah, I like the name. <laughs> yeah, Bing so you, it on. Yeah, you you go on and there's a there's a little test app thing and you can do five searches and it won't tell you are you getting the results on Bing or Google and then you say you vote on them like is this a better result on this side or this side? So Bing, you go to bingitonline dot com. Right. All right. Let me enter in a and, search. Uh, uh, try it. Try it. Windows. Try well, I shouldn't do a Windows Weekly because that it'll do better. No, non non branded search. Non. I should do a non branded search. Lady Gaga. Let's do that. That's a lot of people search for Lady Gaga. Loading round one. Now, see, but I can tell the difference between a Bing search and a Google search. Or can I? I think that's the point. They really look quite the same. Um, okay, so this, is, uh, this has news at the top, so obviously that's the Google result. Um, on the other hand, this has the Lady Gaga site on the top. And there's news. Well, so which good. one do you like more? Do Actually, like maybe a this is Google because it's got videos. It's like a vision test, Leo. Is it better now a or now? Or B. They look the right. same. Exactly. <sighs> oh, I can't you can Google. say draw. Yeah. It was Let a me, draw. It's a draw. I'm going to do a draw. So let's do another one. Yeah. Okay. Um, do president's beer recipe. President's. Okay. Oh, there you go. Because the, 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 the one that gives me the, the, the recipe the soonest, right, is going to be what I want. Let's see. Loading round two. First of all, you know what you lose in this site is the uh, autocomplete stuff. Yeah, that's all right. This Which, is just, you don't do well, this all the time. That's part of the search experience, right? right. I mean, um, news. This looks pretty much the same. ABC News, Washington Ail, Post. Ail to the chief, by the way. That's, that's, that's definitely the headline, headline right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, here it is Obama release. Yeah, I, you know, I'd say it's a draw. But maybe, that's, okay. maybe they're happy with a draw, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe. How about, let's say, flight to Sydney. There you go. Uh, Although why you'd want to go to Australia is beyond me. But all right, let's go to Auckland. <laughs> nice, nice recovery, Paul. Well done. Flights <laughs> to Auckland. There you go. If I spell it right, it probably sends you somewhere in America now. Yep, Auckland, ah. Texas. Oh, look at this. Now I've got actual flights here. Well, I got actual flights here. Now a little bit more information on the left. I think Bing wins this one. I'm gonna say results on left. Is that Bing? Oh, whatever. It's the one. We don't know. The one on the left. Point. We don't know. That's the point. Okay. I'm going to uh -huh. let the chat room choose one more. Chat room, give me one more search. Something that um, that I would, uh, that will be a good test. Search for Amazon Kindle. Oh, Weather in Petaluma. I like that. That's kind of Hobbit. Who said Hobbits? Hobbits. Hicks the <laughs> Hobbits. Seriously. <laughs> Hobbits. Let's see. Paul, have you seen any hobbits walking around ticket? Actually, no, don't no, ask actually, that. Most people problem. here are bigger than I am. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> I like the left. I don't know if that's Bing. So, last one before the results, hobbits. And we'll do one more. <laughs> hobbits. <laughs> there they are. That's oh, a look, draw. It's the Microsoft crew from TechEd. Oh, <laughs> those are identical. <laughs> so, the winner is, oh, Google. Mm, I'm sorry. They won in the wow. flights to Auckland and weather in Petaluma. But that's because Google was not left. This is, you know, this is bold of Microsoft that they even, you know, I mean, this is a fair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is fair. Yeah, they're trying to get people who have just decided, you know, Bing results are awful to to give it another look. Well, and this the main point here is really to. close. I, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. have, you know. So, do Microsoft search results come with viruses too, or is that just a <laughs> misperception? Of do Bing? Do, what does Google come with viruses? <laughs> no, Somebody, saying, you know, like the weird, the weird uh, perception of Microsoft yeah. out in the world. You yep. know, it's like I don't want to use that. I, I'll get a virus on my. Oh, computer. I get what yeah. you're saying. It's not secure. Yeah. Somebody tweeted me. They said um, I, um, I went to a website uh, in Chrome and I got a um, virus warning. You know how you get those virus warnings? And I called the company and they said, "Oh, just use Internet Explorer." <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not the answer you were looking for. Uh, so how do I win a surface? To, by doing that and entering my name in a drawing? Yeah, that, there's a bing, there's a sweepstakes um, uh, that's part of this as well. And you can go and vote. In this. If you go to the sweepstakes and you agree to tweet certain things that they oh, tell you to tweet, you tweet you're entered things. for one of the prizes is a Surface. Then there's Windows 8 and Xbox um, with a Connect and a few other things. These are not done by Microsoft. These are done by ad agencies, right? Probably. Yeah. yeah. There's an ad agency. <laughs>
But it's a it's a good idea, and I like how it's done. I think it's a, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. They they really want to continue to build their search share, which is still like hovering around fifteen percent. And they've realized like until we get people to just give us a try, we're not going to have a chance That's to right. get much beyond that. And it's one of the reasons I put this uh, Bing right at the top of my uh, uh, Android phone. And you know, it's fine. The truth is, there's not that much difference one way or the other. Um, Except and, you can't win a surface on Google. <laughs> <laughs> you know. We're going to take a break, come back with our picks, our tips, our rumors. And somebody was saying during the Kindle coverage, damn it, I'm, I need my Enterprise Pick of the Week. So hang on because it, it, it's, it's it'll, del, better late than never. It's coming up. But first, time to talk about audiobooks. One of the announcements that Amazon made, and I don't know what this is going to mean uh, long term for Audible, but they announced, and of course Amazon owns Audible, that the Whisper Sync capability that's been a part of uh, the Kindle for some time, where you, you know, you read a book on a one Kindle device and then you read it on another device, and the and the book jumps to the last read place, which is such a great thing. And I've been wanting this in audio for so long. Amazon announced they're going to do it in audio as well. Now I'm not sure how this will integrate in with Audible, and you know, this is their audio book uh, store. So I'm excited. I am excited. I look forward to hearing how this works. This is audible.com. And uh, what it is is a bookstore of 100,000 plus fantastic books. Paul and I are both big Audible fans. I uh, I love audible.com. What, what, do you, what do you got? Uh, you got a recommendation for us this week, Paul? You know, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't uh, prepare one for the show. Well, the stuff I've been reading, as you'll soon discover, is not on Audible. Sadly, it should be. But on the uh, plane, I mean, how long is that flight? That's a long flight. It's a long flight. So the one I had from last week that I didn't use was uh, Stephen King's other epic book. So you just finished The Stand. You I can did. compare the run times on these. They're very close. Wow. Is uh, Stephen King's It. Oh, It. And if, you, and if you look this up, what you will discover is that it's, I believe it's very, very close to the length I think The, of stand, the stand is slightly longer, but not much. Yeah, it's, but it's close. This is 45 hours. <laughs> Holy cow. Time. Now, what's this about? Because yeah. I have not read this one. Oh, are you, are you serious? Yeah. Oh, so this is oh, this is fantastic. It's it, you know, this is Stephen King has these kind of archetypical stories that he writes where it's about uh, people who have these relationships that last throughout their entire lives. So it's a bunch of kids who are friends, like the body which was turned into the stand, and then they run into each other again later in life. Right. Right. And uh, this is about kids uh, who were terrorized by kind of an evil presence that was in their main town. Go figure it. That's a Stephen King story. When they were kids, and then as adults, they all come back to confront it again. Oh. And, uh, and it's exemplified by this Pennywise the Clown uh, that you see there. Scary on the, uh, Clowns. The cover. Always yeah. good. It was made into kind of a terrible t you know, miniseries on TV, I believe, uh, with the guy who played John Boy on... On the Waltons, whatever that guy's name is. Yeah, but, um, this is why I love audiobooks. Forget the movie, yeah. because it's always going to be more vivid, more real if you listen to an audiobook, and especially when it's from Audible, because they get the best. And this readers. is exactly the right amount of time to do nothing but listen to this book all the way to New Zealand and all the way back. <laughs> you got it. That's exactly the amount of time it's, it takes. And th imagine that. I mean, you know, who has time to read anymore? But you could, on a flight to New Zealand, read an entire forty-five hour book. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, enjoy. Uh, you get this one for free. Uh, actually, there's 100,000 titles. Uh, you get a credit towards your first book, and most books are a single credit, like 90%. So you, that means 90,000 things you can choose from. That's the challenge. Go to uh, our web, a special website, audible.com slash windows. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That first month is free. That first book is free. Cancel at any time. The book is yours to keep forever. And it would be certainly getting dollar for value there. Or value for dollar, one or the other. The stand is a little longer. It's a little it's longer. It's a little longer. It, they're, they're close, though, I bet. They're I close. Bet they're Stand's close. 48 hours. Jeez Louise. Yeah, uh, so the stand is 48, and it was, what, 45? 45. So you get yeah, three right. extra hours. If you're buying by the hour. <laughs> really? It's like, yeah. If you're buying it by the, uh, by the kilo, maybe the stand is a better value. <laughs> by the way, they've added, you know, they've always had like and tweet buttons. Now they have a pin it button. So uh, you can now Pinterest your Audible pick. Audible.com slash Windows. Hey, speaking of Twitter, Stephen Sanofsky, Twitter account. Can Sanofsky do anything in under 2,000 words? Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, uh, it's going to be he'll have a lot of funny. ellipses and he'll yeah. just continue. 18 continuous it's his tweets. his real account, which is, it really is him. It, um, well, yeah. So, I mean, you should follow it. I don't. He has a lot of free time now. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, done. So Windows now, is done. Now, now, yeah. yeah. 
So uh, <laughs> is it Steven Sanofsky? Is that is that? Uh... Oh, I wonder. Let me look. I have to do a search for it. See if I can find it. What? How did this come up? Why, how, did Somebody the, tweeted me. So what happened? Go ahead. Yeah. What's, uh, what what's, happened what's today was somebody. Um, it's it's Twitter dot com slash Steve Sai, not ah. Steven Sai. Steve Sai. S T E V E S Y S S I S I. And the uh, the avatar symbol he's using is the Hindu Om symbol. Oh, look at which that! Which made me wonder if it was really him. Um, but it says this remember, is really me. How could it not be? Uh, this is really me. That, <laughs> yeah. There, there, there's it, what happened this morning was a couple people and I were talking about is that really him and then he came on and said yep it's me to and you then, um, he tweeted you he well he didn't no he didn't uh, directly address me that never happens but um, uh, he I beg, to, I beg to differ he says at surf evangelist <laughs> at Mary Joe Foley at Muhammad Mus yes yeah. I'm just surprised he didn't get me off phone. that thread but he I'm on there and um see? yeah. But then he, it really is him. And as you can see, he already has 569 followers. He says, I'm going to lobby for 280 it. characters to see how that goes. Not sure what I will say, but I promise yeah. I will be brief. Well, yeah. I'm following him. him. Oh, I got to sign up for Twitter. <laughs> One of these days, I'll we're sign up waiting. for Twitter. And uh, yeah, We're all waiting. That's exciting. Yeah, we're waiting, Steve. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Uh, let's uh, start with you, Paul Thorat, your pick of the week. I have two tips this week oh, and no tip. software pick, although okay. I didn't want to step on what Mary Jo's got coming up. But uh, And I'm so tired, I don't even really want to discuss this at length. Though, but, <laughs> uh, as, as, as people are moving to these new Windows 8 apps, they're running into some of the limitations. And I, I think that these limitations are going to iron out over time. In fact, I would be surprised if October 26th came and went without some major update to these apps I'm about to discuss. But... Essentially, what you've got are these Xbox Music and Xbox Video apps that kind of sit on top of your computer and aggregate the content that you have in the store as well as on your hard drive in your libraries. And a lot of people that go into these things don't like that the store is kind of up front and center, but each of them have a switch. So if you go into Settings, which is a universal control in Windows 8 for, Metro, for uh, Windows 8 style apps, uh, you can type uh, Windows Key plus I to bring up Settings, and then you go into... Um, preferences on both of these apps, you can actually flick a switch that will cause it to only look at your content and not go to the store by default. And I think a lot of people like that. But maybe the bigger issue is around this notion of um, content tagging. You know, that I've seen this myself. I've got some albums that come through as unknown album, even though they're tagged properly. Or I have some movies or TV shows that aren't tagged as movies or TV shows. They're just tagged as videos and, and the video app doesn't know what to do with them. Um, the basic advice is to use the uh, tagging capabilities in the in the Zune PC software. The problem is that even even with that, these apps don't actually respect some of the changes that you make, and so these things aren't being filed correctly. So, uh, I've written tip articles about this. You can go to my Windows 8 page and see them. But um, I, I think some of the problems are just things that aren't going to be resolved until the apps themselves are updated. And so, I've, I've been writing about what you can do for now and. The problem is that some of this stuff just simply isn't um, fixable yet, you know, until the apps are, are more mature. Very good. Nice tip for those of us moving I to eight. I misspelled Mark Rosinovich's name, a name I see, which is fun. Well, <laughs> hey, how do you spell it? That's the question. It's uh, with, a, with a K. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Mark Rosinovich is a... Oh, you, you didn't misspell a, Rosinovich. You misspelled I Mark. Okay, I, I understand. <laughs> I see the problem here. You, do you understand the trouble that this time zone thing is? I understand uh, that. It ruined yes. my brain, you know. Yes. <laughs> I was supposed to meet Bradley yesterday. I came down an hour early, then wondered why he was late. You know, it's it's been... It's been a weird week, but um, Mark Rosinovich uh, is uh, one of the smartest people I've ever met, and you know Mary Jo knows him as well. Uh, he is a what is his title, Mary Jo? He's a tech. What is his? Uh, he's a Windows he's fellow a technical or a fellow. Yeah, yeah. tech yeah. fellow at Microsoft, um, which basically means he walks on air and he can do whatever he wants. But you know he works in the Azure, Azure team now, I believe, uh, formerly Windows Core. He's the author of the Sys Internal Tools, the, uh, the Windows Internal Books. And recently he has started writing novels, and he's writing these uh, technology novels, kind of like Daniel Suarez, not as far-fetched as the Daniel Suarez stuff, but more rooted in actual things that are going on today in the world, but also things that are going on today with technology and security, in particular with computers. And so his first book came out last year, was called Zero Day. And since then he's written a, a it's like a Kindle single, I guess, is, I'm not sure what to call it, it's kind of like a, 
like a 45 RPM version of a short story or whatever. And then he's written the sequel to Zero Day, which just came out this week. It's called Trojan Horus. Um, unfortunately, these books are not available on Audible. I hope they will be soon, but you can get them in paper form and you can get them on the Kindle. And so I'm reading them, I'm reading them now on the Kindle. But um, Zero Day, or rather, uh, Trojan Horus is a, is a very... Uh, obvious uh, sequel to the first book, and so interesting uh, if you, it, side effect. By the way, of using that Bing it on my home, yeah. my search is now Bing. Yeah. Oh, it does automatically it automatically change. It seems yeah. to have automatically changed me to That's Bing. Bad. <laughs> That's bad. <clears throat> okay. Virus, Leo. Mm -hmm. But you see, you thought you couldn't get a virus from Bing. All right. The thing that's interesting about these books is that they actually teach you about computer security as you're reading them. That's neat. And it's not completely ham-handed. I mean, it's pretty good. Like you, uh, I think a lot of people don't understand the ramifications of some of the stuff that's going on with computer security these days and uh, root kits and all that kind of stuff. And, and there's, some, there's actually some good information in here. Um, and in in the likes of, you know, Daniel Suarez or Mike, Michael Kreitner or whoever, also some kind of heads up about the dark side of technology as well. Interesting. I I really love Mark. He's Sis Internals are the best. This is Kindle, yeah. hardcover, and paperback. Trojan Horse, a novel. Kevin Mitnick wrote the foreword. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. All right. Is it Mary Jo's turn? I think it's my turn. For the long awaited, much awaited Enterprise Pick of the Week. Yes. So my enterprise pick of the week is something we mentioned briefly before, Hyper-V Server 2012. And Paul, as Paul mentioned, it's free. Um, it's a dedicated standalone product that has the Hyper-V hypervisor and it. it has Windows Server driver model, some virtualization capabilities, um, and it supports components like failover clustering. But it doesn't include everything. So there's no free virtualization rights to install Windows Server and in a guest OS, um, but that that's not a total showstopper for people. Um, if you, uh, a friend of mine who's Aiden Finn, a Microsoft MVP, says, um, he was blogging about it this week and said, it's good for people without software assurance on older hosts. It's good if you're doing some Linux hosting, uh, VDI, um, things like lab projects. So there's certain uses for this thing and you can go and download it now as of this week. It's out there, it's ready. And it might be something you use for certain workloads, not everything. And can I give a shout out to Twyatt here? Yes, this week in yeah. Enterprise Tech, hosted by the lovely Father Robert Balliser and frequented by Mary Jo Foley. Yeah, the reason the reason I want to shout out Monday's show, which is going to be at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, this coming Monday, is it's going to be an almost all Microsoft show we're Ooh. doing. We're going to talk about Windows Server. Are there Server. any other kinds? About, <laughs> oh yes, yeah, there are. <laughs> that's why I'm not. A, that's why I'm not a co-host. I'm just a guest. They talk about Microsoft a lot, but not all. But this is going to be like if you're a Microsoft person in enterprise tech, you probably want to tune in on Monday because we're going to do a lot of Windows Server um, and other. Sundry Microsoft Enterprise Technologies. Good. Yeah, that's a great show. Um, even if you're not in enterprise, I think it's it's fascinating uh, to see how the pros solve problems that we at home often deal with. So, yeah. Good plug. Thank you, Mary Jo. I should plug it more often. This Week in Enterprise Tech uh, is every Monday noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC on twit.tv or available after the fact at twit.tv slash T-W-I-E-T, This Week in Enterprise Tech. This Week in Tech slash TV slash Twyatt. And your rumor, not not code name, but rumor of the week. Yeah, we're going to do a rumor of the week this week. Um, since we were talking about Stephen Sanofsky earlier, I thought it might be good to do a Stephen Sanofsky-related rumor. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Paul's going, now what is she going to say? This is going to go in a weird direction. <laughs> oh, she's trying to get me fired. Seriously. No, it's, a, it's an interesting tip uh, that I got, but Microsoft won't confirm. Um, the tip is that they've taken the words Windows Live totally away now. And so before, Stephen Sanofsky was the president of the Windows and the Windows Live division. And now I hear he is just president of the Windows division, mm. that the Windows Live team is now being called the Windows Services team. And that there might even be a new team inside of Windows called the Windows App Apps Team, which is doing the things like mail and calendar and photo gallery and all that. Um, so it's it's interesting because Microsoft slowly but surely been taking away references to Windows Live, doing away with that. It, it was never really a clear or a good brand, in my opinion. But um, 
the tip, the the rumor is that this is their, it's kind of like a new consolidation of names, not so much like a big reorg or anything, but more a consolidation of names inside the division to clear things up a little and make it clear this is the Windows division. So you're saying live is dead? Live, live is dead except when you talk about Xbox. Xbox is it's live. It's always is still live, right. But that's a different yeah. product. Yeah. Which may be why they wanted to do this. Yeah, Windows Live is dead. I, I met with the you know the former Windows Live guys in New York uh, a month or two ago, and w- was joking about that because at that, that time they didn't know what they were going to call themselves. So I, I, I sort of said, you know, so what are you exactly? And he just started laughing. He said, Yeah, that's the question. We have no idea what we are. You know, <laughs> we're a zombie. <laughs> we're the, Metro. The, we're the team formerly known as Windows Live. There we have go. this kind of a symbol we use. <laughs> <laughs> that might be what the Sanofsky symbol is. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Paul, it's great to ha- talk to you, even though you're all the way in uh, New Zealand. And frankly, the time zones are not ideal. I appreciate you're getting up early, earlier than you had to, it turned out. Same thing for you, Bradley <laughs> Burroughs of uh, Microsoft New Zealand. Really appreciate that. Great to have Made you. a pleasure. Paul's website is the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. I'm told, Paul, your book is arriving on people's doorsteps today. Yes, it is. Yes. Very It's going to arrive here. I'm supposed to get some here so we can do a little giveaway. Great. Windows 8 yeah. Secrets. It's out faster than Windows 8 even. We should uh, thank Skip, too, and um, the facility we're in is uh, going to get this wrong. Yeah. Again. Rima Broadcasting Group uh, for letting us be here. They, they have amazing bandwidth here, unlike the rest of this country. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, in it's fact, kind of a... it's really been good because both you and Bradley are using it, and it, both of you look great. Yeah. I mean, it really is working, and yeah. there's no latency. Yeah. We're talking around no. the world here. If it were a yeah. satellite call, I'd have to wait three seconds. This is a, It's really kind of amazing. Yeah, it really yeah. is. So it's, it's, really been, is. it's been great uh, being able to come here and do this. Skype so. works so well uh, when you throw enough bandwidth at it. It's just... Uh, <laughs> yep. Incredible. Oh, we should buy it. Oh, no, we did. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, someone should do something with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also thanks to Mary Jo Foley, who writes about Microsoft on ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com. And, uh, and it's just, uh, you know, I can't imagine two people I'd rather uh, do a Windows show with. You guys are just up on it and know what's going on. And uh, thank you for being here. We do this show normally if we don't have to uh, wait for the Amazon announcements. Uh, 11 a.m., Pacific time on uh, Thursdays. We all, That's roughly 2 p.m. Eastern time or 1800 UTC on twit.tv. Do tune in and watch live if you can. And if you can't, we make on-demand versions of this show and all our shows now in HD. We have 720p versions as well at twit.tv slash WW. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you. We'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. <laughs> <laughs>